بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الفهم وأكرمني من نور الفهم اللهم افتح لنا أبواب رحمتك وانشر لنا خزائن علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين Alhamdulillah, we have tawfiq to continue our study of Mafatihul Hayat by Ayatullah Jawadi Amuli Hafadhullah. Another aspect of social system in Islam is to be very protective of the reputations of people and keeping their secrets confidential. When in a society, people are safe physically and psychologically, socially, politically, then they can focus on their progress, on helping each other, and they can build upon what they have achieved. But if there is no security, People can be physically killed or injured or made, you know, disabled. Or if there is no security with respect to your reputation, you work with honesty, with piety, help 10, 20, 30 years, then someone comes and attacks your reputation, which has been given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but also with hard work because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's support is also based on our efforts so something which has been built over years people spread in you know, one rumor and it can damage in the long term of course inshallah it will come back and Allah would not let any person uh, remain in difficult situation forever but you would lose lots of opportunities time may pass and many things that you had planned to do cannot happen or you know your family your children can get affected so it's very important that we in the way that expect from other people to respect us we respect others and we keep our community and society a very safe and peaceful place from every aspect Islam tells us that we should not investigate and you know, try to find out information about others private aspects do not investigate and we should not spy on each other. We should not try to hack Na'uzubillah or you know find out information that people don't want to be public, don't want to be shared. Looking into someone's uh, notes, looking into someone's mails, I don't know, anything that is not meant by that person to be shared, we don't have right to understand and find out and if we come to know then we don't have right to share with other people Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam told Amir al-Mu'mini alayhi salam Ya Ali thamaniyatun in uhinu fala yalumu illa illa anfusahum We had this hadith part of it before also There are eight groups of people that if they are humiliated if they lose their honor, they should only blame themselves. One of those eight groups is this. Someone who enters between two people about a secret that they didn't want to share with him. They didn't want him to in get involved. You are nosy or for any reason you want to find out what is the secret between these two also 
Amir, uh, also Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to his companions, La taghtabu al-Muslimin wa la tattabu awratihim. Do not backbite Muslims. Do not look for finding out the secrets, finding secrets of them. Something that they don't want to be shared. Aura means something that we don't want to be shared. It is used for private parts of body, but it's not only that. Anything that someone doesn't want to be known, doesn't want to become public knowledge, this is aura. And Rasulullah said, don't try to find out such things. فَإِنَّهُ مَنْ تَتَبَّعَ عَوْرَةَ أَخِيهِ تَتَبَّعَ اللَّهُ عَوْرَةَ If someone tries to find out these things which are confidential about his brother, which are normally maybe some weaknesses, you know, anyway, something that he doesn't want other people to know, then Allah would do this with you. And if Allah does this, then it's different. People cannot know everything, but Allah knows everything. And if Allah sees that you are damaging people's reputation, and then he is going to be displeased with you, and angry with you, and punish you, and would do this the same to you, then you are in a very difficult time. May Allah, inshallah, never uh, let this happen in our relation between him and us. And the way to f avoid that is that we should not do this to others. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, لا تطلع صديقك من سرك إلا على ما لب تطلع عليها عدوك لم يبرك فإن الصديق قد يكون عدوا يوما ما. Shaykh Sadduq rahmatullah alayhi in his Amali quotes this hadith from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. And this is a way that you should also be protecting your secrets. Don't share your secrets with your friend because this friend maybe one day becomes enemy. Maybe one day, you know, he leaves you. Maybe one day, you know, you leave him anyway. Only share what if you are sharing with your enemies and, or if your enemies also come to know you, don't mind. So don't share very, very confidential things with your friends even. Of course, sometimes there are friends that are tested, they are really mu'men over years, you have seen them in difficult times, you know, always they are with you, and you need their help, you may share with them, but not every person who is a friend, friend at school, friend at university, friend at work, you know, that you have just uh, been knowing each other for, you know, sh short period of time, very occasionally, a few minutes, you know, few uh, over coffee. These are uh, friends, okay, but not, those true friends. If you remember uh, many sessions before we had this discussion about friends and you know we have friends with whom you laugh with, there are friends that they are really your friends. So let me translate for you also the hadith. Don't inform your friend about your secret except those secrets that even if your enemies come to know they don't harm you because a friend can one day become an enemy and if you keep things that are private confidential so you are concerned about people's reputation you keep their things confidential this has great reward Amirul Mu'minin alayhi salam says in Nahjul Balagha letter 53 Fastur al mastata'at. As much as you can hide and cover aura of people. As I said, this is not only physical aura, anything that they don't want to be known. Yastur Allahu minka ma tuhibbu satrahu min ra'iyyatik. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also would cover you and protect for you your honor by hiding what you don't want people to know about your situation, your work, your activities, your basically your aura also will be covered. 
in his uh, message Imam alayhi salam told to Malik that yes this uh, this was actually from the letter to the Malik uh, also we have in hadith from Imam Musa ibn Ja'far alayhi salam thalathatun yastadhilluna bi dhilla arsh adh yawm la dhilla illa dhilluh there are two groups three groups of people who benefit from the shadow of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the shadow of divine throne arsh Allah of course arsh is not a physical you know like bed and uh, throne and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's arsh kursi these are uh, symbols that refer to his knowledge to his power to his dominance and it's obvious when we are talking the shadow of the arch of God it's not physical shadow it's a kind of support and care so there are three groups of people who benefit from the shadow of divine throne the day that there is no shadow except the shadow of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala رجل زوج أخاه المسلم أو أختمه أو كتم له سرا. The person that either marries his brother to someone, his brother wants to get married, he helps him. He brings a good man and good woman together and introduces them to each other I don't know he supports them gives them uh, counseling or he gives them financial support he talks to the families to be pleased anyway so you help another person to get married number one number two oh oh there is someone who is in need of a person to help for example uh, uh, there is an old couple they need someone to help them Either you help them or you provide them with a servant, for example. Someone who is ill needs help. Or number three, katama lahu serra. Hides his secret. He has something that no, for example, there is an issue with his health. He doesn't want anyone to know. There is some, I don't know, family issue. He doesn't want anyone to know. Something about his work, something about his income. He has trusted you with a secret or you have come to know you keep this secret as it is your secret and you don't want other people to know about it so we had a hadith from uh, Imam Qadim alayhi salam which was the last one and before that a hadith from Amir al mumini in Nahjul Balaghi letter 53 which was actually in the advice Imam gave to Malik Ashtar and these two about the reward for keeping secrets then Ayatollah Jawad Yamali has a heading about the punishment for people who gossip and who like to uh, spread the faults and flaws that people may have this person is you know not good with his salat this person is not good with his job this person is not good I don't know with his in-laws or her in-laws you know things that anyway are not good but you are not supposed you know to share with other people actually things which are not good it's better to remain hidden for the sake of that person and for the sake of these things don't become normal in the society so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said وَكَانَ فِي الْمَدِينَةِ أَقْوَامٌ لَا عُيُوبَ لَهُمْ There were some people in Medina, Rasulullah is explaining experience of, you know, some Muslims in Medina. It's interesting that this, of course, may happen to all societies. There were some people in Medina, لَا عُيُوبَ لَهُمْ They didn't have themselves any problem. But فَتَكَلَّمُوا فِي عُيُوبَ النَّاسِ 
they started talking about problems of people. فَأَذْهَرَ اللَّهُ لَهُمْ عُيُوبًا لَمْ يَزَالُوا يُعْرَفُونَ بِهَا إِلَىٰ أَنْ مَاتُوا What happened? Then they started having problems and these problems were known to people until they died, people were aware that they had these problems. Initially, they didn't have problems. But by blaming people and many times, unfortunately, this also comes by ridiculing, by humiliating. They damage reputation of people. As a punishment, they themselves got into problems. And these problems were known by people till they died. Many times when we do bad to others, the same thing, but maybe in a stronger way, comes back to us. Also, Rasulullah said, لا تتبعوا أوراتهم فإنه من تتبع أورة أخيه تتبع الله أورته as we had it before, but there is a new thing here. وَمَنْ تَتَبَّعَ اللَّهُ أَوْرَتَهُ يَفْضَحُ فِي جَوْفَ بَيْتَهُ Don't try to find out the things that people don't want to be known. If you do this, Allah will do this with you. And if Allah does this with you, even if you are in your home and you don't come out, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can this, you know, take your honor away, dishonor you. You are fighting people. You are damaging people, destroying their reputation. Then Allah, who is wali for everyone, will be upset with you. This is actually the nature of this world, that if you send good, you will receive good. If your intention is good, your action is good, you wish good for people, you pray for people, inshallah you receive good. But if you send out cursing people, you know, I don't know, wishing them bad, jealousy, greediness, uh, damaging their reputation, okay, these all also come back to you in dunya and of course in the hereafter. Imam Sadiq salam said, Man ittala'a min mu'minin ala dhambin aw sayya'a فَأَفْشَى ذَلِكَ عَلَيْهِ وَلَمْ يَكْتُمْهَا وَلَمْ يَسْتَغْفِرِ اللَّهَ لَهُ كَانَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ كَعَامِلَهَا Very warning. Whoever becomes aware of a sin or bad action of a mu'min and spreads this, afsha, he spreads it and doesn't hide it and doesn't ask forgiveness for that person. Instead of hiding and asking forgiveness, he spreads this. كَانَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ كَعَامِلِهَا He would be considered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. عِنْدَ اللَّهِ means in the sight of Allah. He would be considered as the one who has done those sins or bad things. So you and that person that has done this become the same. وَعَلَيْهِ بِذْرُ ذَلِكَ الَّذِي أَفْشَى عَلَيْهِ وَكَانَ مَغْفُورًا لَعَامِلْهَا وَكَانَ إِقَابُهُ مَا أَفْشَى عَلَيْهِ فِي الدُّنْيَا مَسْتُورٌ عَلَيْهِ فِي الْآخِرَةِ What happens is that that sin will be transferred to this person and that person will not be punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he has already been suffering in dunya because this careless person has damaged his reputation so he has suffered in dunya already in akhirah this will be actually covered and remain mastur. Even people on the plane of Mahshar, they would not know about it. Because he has already been somehow punished. Not by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but by this cursed, careless person. And Allah is more generous than punishing person again when he has already suffered a lot. But this person who felt he is very nice person because he has not done this sin, now this sin is registered for him because he has spread it and damaged the reputation of that person who had committed it and also has contributed to a spread of bad things, bad wives in the society. So 
Alhamdulillah, uh, this part finished. And inshallah, in the next session, we will talk about helping people to meet their needs. Qadha o hajat al mu'min. How much is rewarded and recommended to help people with their needs? That's great discussion. And inshallah, we will discuss it in the next session. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen.